Geologic Time Scale, Wikipedia Audio The geologic time scale is a system of chronological dating that relates geological strata to time. It is used by geologists, paleontologists, and other Earth scientists to describe the timing and relationships of events that have occurred during Earth's history. The tables of geologic time spans, presented here, agree with the nomenclature, dates, and standard color codes set forth by the International Commission on Stratigraphy. The primary defined divisions of time are eons, in sequence the Hadean, the Archean, the Proterozoic and the Phanerozoic. The first three of these can be referred to collectively as the Precambrian Suprayon. Eons are divided into eras, which are in turn divided into periods, epochs, and ages. The following four timelines show the geologic time scale. The first shows the entire time from the formation of the Earth to the present, but this gives little space for the most recent eon. Therefore, the second timeline shows an expanded view of the most recent eon. In a similar way, the most recent era is expanded in the third timeline, and the most recent period is expanded in the fourth timeline. Terminology Corresponding to eons, eras, periods, epochs, and ages, the terms aonothem, erathem, system, series, stage are used to refer to the layers of rock that belong to these stretches of geologic time in Earth's history. Geologists qualify these units as early, mid, and late when referring to time, and lower, middle, and upper when referring to the corresponding rocks. For example, the lower Jurassic series in chronostratigraphy corresponds to the early Jurassic epoch in geochronology. The adjectives are capitalized when the subdivision is formally recognized, and lower case when not, thus early Miocene but early Jurassic. Hadean Eon 4640-31 Chow Tien era 464404 Maya the name alluding both to the mythological chaos and the chaotic phase of planet formation, Jack Hilshion or Zirconian era 4404 Maya both names allude to the Jack Hills greenstone belt which provided the oldest mineral grains on Earth, zircons. Evidence from radiometric dating indicates that Earth is about 4.54 billion years old. The geology or deep time of Earth's past has been organized into various units according to events which took place. Different spans of time on the GTS are usually marked by corresponding changes in the composition of strata which indicate major geological or paleontological events, such as mass extinctions. For example, the boundary between the Cretaceous period and the Paleogene period is defined by the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, which marked the demise of the non-avian dinosaurs and many other groups of life. Older time spans, which predate the reliable fossil record, are defined by their absolute age. Geologic units from the same time but different parts of the world often look different and contain different fossils, so the same time span was historically given different names in different locales. For example, in North America, the Lower Cambrian is called the Wakaban series that is then subdivided into zones based on succession of trilobites. In East Asia and Siberia, the same unit is split into election, at Dabanyan, and Bottomian stages. A key aspect of the work of the International Commission on Stratigraphy is to reconcile this conflicting terminology and define universal horizons that can be used around the world. Some other planets and moons in the solar system have sufficiently rigid structures to have preserved records of their own histories, for example, Venus, Mars, and the Earth's moon. Dominantly fluid planets, such as the gas giants, 
do not preserve their history in a comparable manner. Apart from the late heavy bombardment, events on other planets probably had little direct influence on the Earth, and events on Earth had correspondingly little effect on those planets. Construction of a time scale that links the planets is, therefore, of only limited relevance to the Earth's time scale, except in a solar system context. The existence, timing, and terrestrial effects of the late heavy bombardment is still debated. In ancient Greece, Aristotle observed that fossils of seashells in rocks resembled those found on beaches he inferred that the fossils in rocks were formed by living animals, and he reasoned that the positions of land and sea had changed over long periods of time. Leonardo da Vinci concurred with Aristotle's interpretation that fossils represented the remains of ancient life. The 11th century Persian geologist Avicenna and the 13th century Dominican bishop Albertus Magnus extended Aristotle's explanation into a theory of a petrifying fluid. Avicenna also first proposed one of the principles underlying geologic time scales, the law of superposition of strata, while discussing the origins of mountains in the Book of Healing. The Chinese naturalist Shen Kuo also recognized the concept of deep time. In the late 17th century Nicholas Steno pronounced the principles underlying geologic time scales. Steno argued that rock layers were laid down in succession, and that each represents a slice of time. He also formulated the law of superposition, which states that any given stratum is probably older than those above it and younger than those below it. While Steno's principles were simple, applying them proved challenging. Over the course of the 18th century geologists realized that the Neptunist theories popular at this time in the late 18th century proposed that all rocks had precipitated out of a single enormous flood. A major shift in thinking came when James Hutton presented his theory of the Earth, or, an investigation of the laws observable in the composition, dissolution, and restoration of land upon the globe before the Royal Society of Edinburgh in March and April 1785. It has been said that as things appear from the perspective of the 20th century, James Hutton in those readings became the founder of modern geology. 95 to 100 Hutton proposed that the interior of Earth was hot, and that this heat was the engine which drove the creation of new rock, land was eroded by air and water and deposited as layers in the sea, heat then consolidated the sediment into stone and uplifted it into new lands. This theory, known as Plutonism, stood in contrast to the Neptunist flood-oriented theory. Rationale The first serious attempts to formulate a geologic time scale that could be applied anywhere on Earth were made in the late 18th century. The most influential of those early attempts divided the rocks of Earth's crust into four types primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Each type of rock, according to the theory, formed during a specific period in Earth history. It was thus possible to speak of a tertiary period as well as of tertiary rocks. Indeed, tertiary remained in use as the name of a geological period well into the 20th century and quaternary remains in formal use as the name of the current period. The identification of strata by the fossils they contained, pioneered by William Smith, Georges Cuvier, Jean Diomalius de Haloey, and Alexander Brongniart in the early 19th century, enabled geologists to divide Earth history more precisely. It also enabled them to correlate strata across national boundaries. If two strata contained the same fossils, chances were good that they had been laid down at the same time. 
Detailed studies between 1,820 and 1,850 of the strata and fossils of Europe produced the sequence of geologic periods still used today. Early work on developing the geologic time scale was dominated by British geologists, and the names of the geologic periods reflect that dominance. The Cambrian, and the Ordovician, and Silurian, named after ancient Welsh tribes, were periods defined using stratigraphic sequences from Wales. 113-114 The Devonian was named for the English county of Devon, and the name Carboniferous was an adaptation of the coal measures, the old British geologist's term for the same set of strata. The Permian was named after Perm, Russia because it was defined using strata in that region by Scottish geologist Roderick Murchison. However, some periods were defined by geologists from other countries. The Triassic was named in 1834 by a German geologist Friedrich von Alberti from the three distinct layers red beds, kept by chalk, followed by black shales that are found throughout Germany and Northwest Europe called the Trias. The Jurassic was named by a French geologist Alexander Brongniart for the extensive marine limestone exposures of the Jurem Mountains. The Cretaceous as a separate period was first defined by Belgian geologist Jean Diomalius de Hilloy in 1822, using strata in the Paris Basin and named for the extensive beds of chalk found in Western Europe. British geologists were also responsible for the grouping of periods into eras and the subdivision of the tertiary and quaternary periods into epochs. In 1841 John Phillips published the first global geologic time scale based on the types of fossils found in each era. Phillips' scale helped standardize the use of terms like Paleozoic which he extended to cover a larger period than it had in previous usage, and Mesozoic which he invented. When William Smith and Sir Charles Lyell first recognized that rock strata represented successive time periods, Time scales could be estimated only very imprecisely since estimates of rates of change were uncertain. While creationists had been proposing dates of around six or 7,000 years for the age of Earth based on the Bible, early geologists were suggesting millions of years for geologic periods, and some were even suggesting a virtually infinite age for Earth. Geologists and paleontologists constructed the geologic table based on the relative positions of different strata and fossils, and estimated the time scales based on studying rates of various kinds of weathering, erosion, sedimentation, and lithification. Until the discovery of radioactivity in 1896 and the development of its geological applications through radiometric dating during the first half of the 20th century, the ages of various rock strata and the age of Earth were the subject of considerable debate. The first geologic time scale that included absolute dates was published in 1913 by the British geologist Arthur Holmes. He greatly furthered the newly created discipline of geochronology and published the world-renowned book The Age of the Earth in which he estimated Earth's age to be at least 1.6 billion years. In 1977, the Global Commission on Stratigraphy began to define global references known as GSSP for geologic periods and faunal stages. The Commission's most recent work is described in the 2004 geologic time scale of Gradstein ETL. A UML model for how the time scale is structured, relating it to the GSSP, is also available. History and Nomenclature of the Time Scale Early History The term Anthropocene is used informally by popular culture and a growing number of scientists to describe the current epoch in which we are living. 
The term was coined by Paul Crutzen and Eugene Stormer in 2000 to describe the current time, in which humans have had an enormous impact on the environment. It has evolved to describe an epoch starting sometime in the past and on the whole defined by anthropogenic carbon emissions and production and consumption of plastic goods that are left in the ground. Establishment of Primary Principles Formulation of Geologic Time Scale Naming of Geologic Periods, Eras, and Epochs Dating of Time Scales the Anthropocene Critics of this term say that the term should not be used because it is difficult, if not nearly impossible, to define a specific time when humans started influencing the rock strata defining the start of an epoch. Others say that humans have not even started to leave their biggest impact on Earth, and therefore the Anthropocene has not even started yet. As of September 2015, the ICS has not officially approved the term. The Anthropocene Working Group met in Oslo in April 2016 to consolidate evidence supporting the argument for the Anthropocene as a true geologic epoch. Evidence was evaluated and the group voted to recommend Anthropocene as the new geological age in August 2016. Should the International Commission on Stratigraphy approve the recommendation, the proposal to adopt the term will have to be ratified by the International Union of Geological Sciences before its formal adoption as part of the geologic time scale. The following table summarizes the major events and characteristics of the periods of time making up the geologic time scale. This table is arranged with the most recent geologic periods at the top, and the most ancient at the bottom. The height of each table entry does not correspond to the duration of each subdivision of time. Table of Geologic Time The content of the table is based on the current official geologic time scale of the International Commission on Stratigraphy with the epoch names altered to the early-slash-late format from lower-slash-upper as recommended by the ICS when dealing with chronostratigraphy. A service providing a resource description framework-slash-web ontology language representation of the timescale is available through the Commission for the Management and Application of Geoscience Information GeoSML project as a service and at a Sparkle endpoint. Crons, Subatlantic Suboreal Atlantic Boreal Preboreal. The ICS's Geologic Time Scale 2012 book, which includes the new approved time scale, also displays a proposal to substantially revise the Precambrian time scale to reflect important events such as the formation of the Earth or the Great Oxidation Event, among others while at the same time maintaining most of the previous chronostratigraphic nomenclature for the pertinent time span. Number structure Shown to scale Compare with the current official timeline, not shown to scale. Proposed Precambrian timeline Notes